Underrot is an all-time favourite dungeon of mine with some unique trash and awesome bosses. It's a four-boss dungeon and is returning from Battle for Azeroth, so it's a fairly well-understood dungeon. We will be covering everything you need to know to get you started in Mythic Plus in patch 10.1. Just before we get started, I have probably my greatest work of art I've ever created in a Plater profile that has every single mob colour coded including highlighting important casts so you immediately know what needs kicked and what needs stopped in every dungeon for 10.1. It's honestly like playing with a hack or a cheat sheet and I promise you it will massively help out your gameplay for week one if you use it. I've got it all laid out in a video linked in the description down below if you're interested. It's all free for everyone. All I ask is that if you find it useful to hit that thumbs up and subscribe button for that YouTube algorithm. Anyway, let's get on with the dungeon. The first boss split then includes a few nasty mobs that you need to know about. The first mob you want to watch out for is the Blood Matron. She is a large mob which can't be CC'd and will randomly charge a player casting a Savage Cleave. This cleave is a fairly short range and you can walk out of it and I'd absolutely suggest that you do so as if you get hit by the cleave it will most likely kill you with the bleed effect so watch out for this. The matron will also do a war cry which increases the haste of all nearby mobs so keep that in mind if you're a tank player try not to pull the matron with lots of other mobs. Next up we have the Fetid Maggot. This mob has an uninterruptible cast called Rotten Bile that is a frontal and will absolutely destroy people if you stand in it. You can use stuns or other CC to stop this cast and I would highly recommend doing so whenever you come across one of these maggots. In this first area there are also some small blood ticks. These will deal exploding damage on death similar to the small shards from Temple of the Jade Serpent. On fortified weeks specifically these will do serious damage at high keys so as a tank player make sure you aren't pulling too many ticks at once and when they are dying make sure that you are using defensives that includes you DPS players don't just focus on doing damage. Next up we have Blood Priests. They have two important casts which you need to watch out for. The first is the Gift of Gahoon. This is an interruptible cast that applies a buff to an enemy mob making it so you cannot kill that mob for 25 seconds. It also increases the damage done of the mob which has that buff. If this cast does go through you can however purge the buff so it's not the end of the world just make sure you're watching out for it and purging mobs if you have the opportunity. The second cast you want to watch out for is Dark Reconstruction. This cast will literally full heal a mob if it goes through so make sure you always kick this cast. The final mob in this area then which you want to watch out for is the Befouled Spirit. The auto attacks from this are essentially an AoE cast around the tank to make sure that you're not standing on top of the tank. And the second thing to watch out for is a cast called Harrowing Despair which will do a serious amount of AoE damage. Again, make sure that you are kicking this. Just before first boss then, the final thing that I want to mention is that the first split has a fork in the road which you need to choose a direction to go down. One path has an additional two matrons which are super, super annoying to deal with. So as a tank, make sure that you look down towards the next platform and choose the correct path without these matrons. Or if you have a death wish, feel free to choose the path with the matrons. On to our first boss then, Elder Liaxa. This boss casts Blood Bolt constantly, which is an interruptible cast and applies a stacking debuff to the tank. You should try and interrupt this as often as possible to help out the incoming tank damage. Liaxa will also cast a couple of abilities which you need to dodge. The first is Creeping Rot, which is a frontal, and the second is Sanguine Feast, which is an AoE around the boss. Finally, Liaxa will cast Blood Effigy which summons a mirror of herself that casts all the same abilities. This mirror needs to be killed ASAP to stop incoming tank damage. Again, make sure you're using interrupts here on both the add and the main boss whenever you can. After first boss then we have some new trash to keep an eye on. The first is the diseased lasher which has the decaying mind cast that applies a healing absorb to a party member and stuns them until it is either A healed up or B disease dispelled. This can and probably should be the highest priority kick as you always want to make sure that your party is is not getting stunned. The next mob in this area is the Blood Swarmer which will randomly fixate people. If you are fixated you need to kite this bat and stay at arm's length. Essentially try and treat it like a spiteful mob. Knockbacks, stuns, slows are super useful here for kiting the bat. The Blood Swarmer also has an AoE damage cast which will interrupt friendly party members so if possible you want to try and interrupt this yourself. 
It is important to kick this, however, I think that the Diseased Lasher is a higher priority, so I would put that first. That's it for mobs in this split then, on to the next boss, which is Kragmore. This boss has three abilities that A, hurt, but B, they also spawn blood lava all around that if you don't stand on and stomp on in time, will turn into mobs that do a huge stacking debuff on the tank. So you need to stand on as many of these lava as possible. The first ability to watch out for then is a tank frontal called indigestion. If you're fast enough as a tank, you can run out of this, but otherwise just make sure you're using mitigation here. The next ability is charge, which targets a random party member and Cragmore will then charge towards them. If you bait the charge into a wall, this will firstly make it much easier to stomp on the ticks, but secondly, it will also make it so the boss doesn't run into the middle of the room and will allow DPS to keep hitting the boss and maintain uptime. The best spot to do this, in my opinion, is right next to this big ribcage. If you tank the boss here, DPS can easily move the boss towards the wall, charge it into a wall, and then dodge the charge. It goes without saying that you need to dodge this charge cast or else you will die. The final ability to watch out for then is Tantrum. The boss essentially just runs into the middle of the room doing massive amounts of party damage and also spawning lava. Make sure that you use defensives here to help out the healer, but also use movement abilities so that you can stomp on as many ticks as possible. If ticks do start spawning, then try and help out the tank with things like AOE stuns so they don't take a huge amount of damage from the ticking bleed effect. The next split of trash then has a couple of mobs that always group together. These are the Death Speakers and Guardians. The Guardians themselves do a shield cast every once in a while, which if successful, will put a shield on the mob. This shield can be purged, you can also use AOE stops on these casts if available. The Death Speakers themselves have one catch which you want to watch out for and that is Raise Dead. It will summon another Guardian that doesn't give percentage so always try and kick this cast whenever possible. Next we have the Grotesque Horror, a big worm that spam casts an ability called Death Bolt which does AOE damage with each successive cast it does even more damage again. So you need to interrupt this again whenever possible to make sure the damage doesn't ramp out of control. The mob will require three kicks, so that means that you need to consistently kick this mob in a certain order. The final mob in this area which you need to deal with then are the Defilers. They have three abilities that you need to manage. The first is a Summon Totem cast, which you don't need to interrupt, however you can. If the cast goes off, a totem will spawn on the ground which if you stand in will do massive damage in a 6 yards radius. However, you can just walk away from this totem and not take any damage. The next ability to watch out for then is Shadow Bolt Volley, a nasty AoE which you want to kick. And finally, you have the Withering Curse cast, which is an absolute must kick as it does damage but also applies a stacking damage done reduction to everyone in the party. So if this goes off and no one kicks it, you won't be able to kill the mob because you aren't going to be doing any damage. Because this mob has three high priority kicks, I highly suggest that you only kick the Shadow Bolt Volley and only kick the Withering Curse. There is also one pack in here that has two defilers which you need to pull so that you don't accidentally pull them onto the boss and for this you need four kicks that's four kicks in a pug that you need to manage the third boss then spore caller zancha is one of the hardest movement bosses i have ever played there are four abilities that you need to know the first is a series of mushrooms will spawn around a circle in the room which if you walk into will pop and add a stacking disease buff to you and this debuff Hits. The next ability is Festering Harvest which will pop all mushrooms left alive and apply a stack of the dots to everyone in your party for each mushroom it has killed. So if there are any mushrooms left in this cast you're probably going to die. So how do you break the mushrooms safely then? Well there are two boss casts that can help you out. The first is Upheaval. This will target non-tanks and will do a swirly under your feet which if it hits mushrooms will also kill them. The other ability is a Shockwave cast which is a tank frontal that will also kill mushrooms. Use these two abilities to make sure you kill off all the mushrooms before the festering harvest cast completes. In the worst case you can use immunities to soak the mushrooms or a disease to spell, to tank a few mushrooms and then dispel them yourself, and honestly in the worst case just sacrifice yourself so that the group doesn't take a huge amount of stacks of the mushroom debuff and instead only one player dies. The final ability to watch out for then is Boundless Rot. This is where a series of grey orbs will spawn and they will do damage to you and add a dot to you if you hit them. 
you need to channel your inner Neo here and ensure that you dodge all of these. My best advice for dodging this is to move towards one set of the orbs to give yourself time to react to the others because honestly it is incredibly hectic. The next split then after this boss has only one new mob and that is the Faceless Corrupter. This mob has two casts so watch out for. First is the Maddening Gaze, this is a long line frontal that will fear you if it hits you. So always make sure you watch out for this and do not get hit by it. The second cast is Abyssal Reach which will spawn a tentacle under all party members that then slams down and does a frontal. It is super hard to tell which direction this frontal is going in so just get away from the tentacles to avoid the damage. At high keys this will just one shot you so don't risk it, always run away from it. And finally onto the last boss, the Unbound Abomination. This boss is super weird and you don't actually do damage to it, instead you will be increasing the boss's energy bar which once full will spawn blood enemies that you need to kill off. Once you've killed them off, the boss will then take a third of its HP bar, so you need to get through three full versions of the energy bar. There is first an ability which you need to watch out for called the Vile Expulsion. Expulsion is a frontal cast which can also bounce off walls, so watch out for that. This does huge damage and will also spawn a pool under any players in close proximity. This grey pool will also subsequently do damage. The boss also applies a stacking magic damage dot which can hit at high stacks. Your friendly titan keeper following you around will periodically cast a cleansing light on a party member which if you stack in will remove all of the magic damage debuffs so you need to stand in this whenever you can. Finally there are lots of rotting spores in the area which you need to kill off early because they drop grey swirlies on the floor which will do damage to you. These can easily be killed off by anything as they have such little HP so every once in a while just make sure you're using an AoE spell to kill these off before they get close to the rest of the party. My best advice for this tank is to A stack up together, this means you will be able to group up for the cleansing light casts and remove the magic damage debuffs, but B it means that also the expulsion casts will always be going in a certain direction. Now the best way of baiting this is to bait the expulsion cast back over the area you've just been in. Because it drops grey pools on the floor you want those grey pools to spawn on top of other grey pools so that then you aren't wasting a lot of space and then you slowly walk around the boss arena in a circle. This will mean that you maximize space and avoid standing in poop on the floor. That's it for this guide then. I will also be releasing a video shortly with all of the tank routes for pugs in every single dungeon. That will cover everything that you need to know about the routes for pugging. So if that sounds good to you then feel free to drop me a subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will see that video in the future. If you want to support me beyond a subscribe then you can also check out my Patreon. I do offer some things in return such as dedicated UI help. If you want to change anything or make certain abilities glow from my UI then I'll work with you to implement that. And finally if you have any questions the best place to catch me really is on my discord i will try and answer youtube comments however if you want a conversation that's the best place to get me i also have my ui linked over there so feel free to go and check that out if you want anyway hopefully you've enjoyed this one if you have we will see you guys in the next one peace